Out of all the things I've learned in my life, all the tidbits of knowledge that have seeped into my noggin over the years, the one thing I found to be the most beneficial is that I learned how to build. Not only has this enabled me to build what I want, whenever I want, and saved me a bunch of money in the process, it's offered me steady employment whenever I needed some. It's offered me freedom because a good carpenter can always find work no matter where he decides to look for it. It's a trade that'll never go out of style, and that, my friends, is job security. Now, I never went to school for this. I started as a laborer and earned a living while my employers taught me everything they knew, and there was a lot of them. No school loans to pay here, man. (laughs) No, sir. Nobody to answer to either. I'm building what I want, whenever I want, and that was the plan from the get-go. Well, the little shed came together nice. Project went well. Some of you might be wondering why I built the structure as small as I did. Several reasons for that. But primarily because here, any structure 50 square feet or over requires a permit. I need a shed right now. And I don't want to wait. Might be several weeks before the town will review the application. And I really don't need everyone up here poking around with tape measures and everything and seeing what I'm doing. (laughs) So, like I said, I needed a shed right now. So I banged this project right up. It's going to suit our needs just fine. I insulated it. I put up OSB board on the walls and the ceiling. It's going to be multi-purpose. I'm not going to tell everybody what the shed's going to be used for just yet. But I'll drop a few hints and see if anybody can guess. One part of the shed is going to be keeping some things frozen, but it's also going to be keeping other things from freezing. (laughs) Living up here off the grid, there's certain things that we need to take care of, and this shed is going to be multi-purpose. I'm also setting up a water collection system that's going to enable me to collect water even throughout the winter. I really put my thinking cap on. I got pretty creative. Now that the structure is up, I'm going to get those propane tanks hooked up and keep at it. And then I will unveil the finished product in another episode of this series. Yeah. Well, it's time to get back to work on the cabin. There's things I need to accomplish before the snow flies, but the interior work can wait for those days I can't work outside. Today, I'm taking the last of the original windows out of the camp. I'll reframe the opening and install a pair of new ones in its place. This gable faces east, and I want to double up on the morning sunshine. For the next task, I cut a hole in the peak so the roof can vent above the insulation. See, here's the insulation. And the vent strips keep it from condensating against the cold roof. Air flows above it and escapes out the gable vent. I covered the opening with insect screen and hardware cloth, but I'll install a louvered panel later on. Up in the peak one minute and under the floor the next. Gotta keep on keeping on and get this bubble foil stapled up. This stuff does a great job of keeping the cold from seeping through those floorboards. Don't have to take my word for it. Just ask Frankie. He's got this stuff figured out pretty good. You know, I never considered buying a power stapler before. But last year when I bought my compressor, it came with three nail guns. And one of them was this Porta Cable pneumatic stapler. Now that I've used it, I don't go back to the other staplers anymore. Trying to work in a tight space like this with that hand spring-loaded stapler I used to have, it would fatigue the heck out of me, or it would be a real pain in the butt to try and use the hammer stapler. And a lot of times when I'm putting up regular insulation with the hammer stapler, if you miss the wall studs, you put a big hole in the paper. And this thing is just effortless, especially I'm up here in this tight space, and I'm just 
putting it's just effortless it's fantastic if you're going to do some insulating or anything that you're using a stapler i highly recommend it i'll put a link to the one that i'm using in the description below but really any pneumatic stapler is probably going to work the same but i've been using this one a lot now for two years it's fantastic So up here at the top of the stairs to the right, this is going to be a work area, a place to work on videos and write my memoirs and stuff like that. This is a real deep closet. At first I was going to put a knee wall in the back, but I decided to run it all the way to the eave. Right now we're just stuffing it with totes and stuff. Place to put it until the rooms are done and everything can get dispersed. I'm going to make a little change and bring that wall out about two feet. There's going to be a desktop running beneath the window, and that'll give a nice wall for that to end to. Then to the left of the stairway is the bedroom, which is still just a catch-all for right now. Putting stuff in there, but that room is done. So this is the view out the upstairs bedroom window. Just look at this beautiful day, beautiful blue sky, nice colors, looking out over the landscape, isn't that nice? If you walk straight in that direction, as the crow flies, it's four miles before you hit a road. It's just woods. It's wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. And right here at the top of the stairs, I have a closet here. This is where the water tank is, which is gravity fed downstairs. There's going to probably be some shelves in here. It's going to be used kind of like as a pantry, a place to hold the surplus food, drinks, that sort of thing. Right here where this partition channel is, I'm going to have a knee wall going across. There's going to be built-in desktop right in front of it with drawers and file cabinets and stuff like that. Be an access door. And these little cubby holes are going to be used for storing off-season clothing and things like that. So this has changed quite a bit since I showed you in that last video with the insulation and the prop event. But all the finishing work will be saved for the winter time when it's too difficult to work outside. So here I left myself an access panel. That way if I find that I have a leak somewhere or I hear a rodent has gotten in, I'll be able to get up above the insulation and put some traps. There's no headroom, there's only a little bit of space there, but I wanted to have some space so I could get up in there and set some traps if I hear rodents in the insulation. So I got the electrical all run now. Wires have run everywhere and beyond. <laughs> and here, after I get all the mudding done, I'll install the doors. I'm going to do louvered doors, especially where there's exterior wall like that. I like to have some airflow. I found in the past when I didn't do that, where I had a closet on an exterior wall, if I didn't have a louvered door, sometimes I get some condensation in the back and things with mold. I want to avoid that. It's always live and learn, you know. If you've been following this series, you probably remember when I filmed this gable and it was nothing but junk stacked up all the way to the ridge pole. <laughs> we got it cleaned out as you can see. It's coming into it, but all the finishing work is going to be saved for when the snow is flying around. Well, if we get a rainy day, you can be up here and I can start mudding. There was one window here in the gable, and this is where I just showed that I reframed the wall. I put a pair of windows here. And then this room is going to be all cabinets with a countertop built in right here. Be able to sit in front of the windows, look out over the landscape, probably work good with my creativity, be good inspiration, be another work 
area here so I can sit and work if I wanted to do it in the morning without having the sun in my face. But I go either way. Not sure what we're going to do for the flooring. When I leveled out all the floor, put these boards down, this is just a new subfloor. We'll do something later on. We're under the crunch now, a winter, winter knocking on the door. So we're just taking things in a matter of priority. But it's all coming together. Yeah, it's going to be a nice work area. Nice place to sit and just work on stuff. This winter, working on the videos, going to be good. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did and you'd like to see more of the cabin life, please click the subscribe button so that you can follow along with future updates. All the best to you and God bless.